वेलकम टू बी बस चैनल इंग्लिश सेक्शन आई एम इम्तियाज पटेल भरेवाला एंड यू आर वॉचिंग अवर प्रोग्राम कॉल इन कन्वर्सेशन विथ आई एम वन ऑफ द होस्ट ऑफ द इंग्लिश सेक्शन बी बस इज ब्रॉट टू यू बाई द कम्युनिटी मीडिया सेंटर बोल्टन यू के एंड एज नेम सजेस्ट इट इज द चैनल फॉर कम्युनिकेशन इट इज द चैनल फॉर कन्वर्सेशन एंड इट इज द चैनल फॉर अवर इंट्रैक्शन विथ ईच अदर as a community we share certain common concerns and challenges we face certain challenges and problems all the time around us we are interested in common issues for common concerns and b buzz aims to give a voice and platform to all of this we look at the issue we examine the issue and we will discuss these issues in details with experts and scholars and intellectuals and we will encourage our listeners and viewers at the same time to participate in our discussion thus we will make every effort to create a discussion forum or a platform for discussion through beavers where we can collectively discuss and also collectively come up with solutions for certain issues which are affecting us as an individual and also as a society having created this discussion forum through beavers the whole idea to provide relevant accurate information on respective subjects so that we can increase awareness and at the same time also we can empower community members one of very important feature of the beavers english section is the interviews we will bring professionals prominent people scholars community representatives political representatives people with educational background health background and community activists and put them questions which you our viewers and listeners have in mind and i'm sure the comments made by our learned guests will provide guidance if not further steps for consideration to all of us so once again my name is imtiaz patel varidiawala i am your host for this english program call in conversation with and we are very privileged and it is our good fortune to have one of the very distinguished young talented guest in the studio neetal uh, parekh and i'm going to introduce her very very shortly but before we put forward several questions to neetal parekh i would like to introduce her that she is a dedicated and passionate school teacher she explores every potential in each students for excellence she is a bbc radio presenter and producer in lancashire a television presenter for india's biggest and the most popular music channel called b for you television she believes that one has to be professional well disciplined and dedicated in whatever you do in order to achieve quality outcome she is very relatable to everyone and what i mean by that she can relate to young people very easily at the same time she can relate to old people and any individuals out there one of the profound quality i have noticed when i was going through her bio ties she offers us one of the profound qualities she offers is her genuine zest for life neetha parekh believes in her motto given by her guru master and i quote in the joy of others lies our own end of quote what a beautiful quote and with this very positive note uh, on behalf of beavers on behalf of beavers listeners and viewers and the entire team we would very much like to welcome to neetal pari to our studio welcome thank you <laughs> what an absolute privilege to be here um and i see that you you made my introduction sound more glamorous than it actually is <laughs> it's it's based on the information you provided and i think i think i think that's that's one of the strength we enjoy at the beavers that you know uh, is to provide community members what we call the good role models Uh, and i think it's good to be recognized at the same time because all those things you have provided is 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 your personal and professional achievement achievement so it's it's our honor and privilege to have you uh 
Thank you. My first question, uh, what would you like me to call? I mean, Neetal Parekh, uh, Neetal Ji, Just Neetal's uh, uh, Because we have to be sensitive because of the <laughs> cultural etiquette and manners and everything. But I think as a young person talking to a young person, of course, if, if that's okay. So the, my, my first question on behalf of Bieber's channel team is, uh, Neetal, that at the outset, could you tell our viewers and listeners briefly about your background in terms of... Uh, your childhood, your upbringing, your education, etc. Absolutely. Um, firstly, it's an absolute honour and privilege to be here and to be recognised by uh, people within the community is um, a different feeling altogether. Um, in regards to my childhood, I, I describe it to be, I, I mean, I remember it just being a really, really a very happy childhood. Um, I always call us the quintessential Hamsad Sadhe family type people because <laughs> we have a huge family. Um, you know, we don't live in a joint family, but we all live very, very close as we do with our uh, lovely Asian families. Um, and I remember our, our strength of pillar or pillar of strength even, um, our grandfather who always, you know, just let us be. I think that was really important. He let us be creative. He let us do musty. He let us, um, you know, just explore what a child should be. We were never at home just, you know, um, playing games or whatever. We were outside. He he promoted all of that. And what was really important, I think, what adds as a core in terms of a lot of us in our family being secure and career orientated and helping society is. Um, the emphasis on being spiritual, being a good person, and we call Guru Agna, um, listening to what our Guru teaches. And what our Guru does teach is very similar, just very human kind of um, traits in doing good to others, being a good person, having a disciplined life, and just enjoy it without having any expectation. Uh, and I think that really shapes the person and the character that I am. So where were you born? I was sorry, of course, I should start with that. I was born in Preston, sunny Preston. Sunny Preston. Uh, it's born... <laughs> now, it's, yeah. now it's a city. I yeah, so we're, yeah, we're a city now. I was born and brought up in Preston. Okay. Um, and yeah, a, a lo in fact, all of us have been brought up in Preston. My grandfather was one of the first person, people even, to move to Preston and work in the railway and from then, then on um, has moved forward. And do you remember anything about your you know, parents and grandparents? When, when did they come and... Any early days, any early memories in terms of yeah, you know, um, share that information. I mean, so it's, we we are obsessed with the camera, uh, and we film everything. We we love to you know we, we love to celebrate. Um, so one of the things I remember is celebrating everyone's birthday with lots of prom and um, lots and lots of celebration. So I remember us. One of the memories is us cooking together and sitting together for hours, having tea and biscuit. And they are really precious memories because I look back and, uh, you know, I always feel that that has helped me become a secure person because we never had lots of money. We never had a flamboyant life. And we understood the importance of relationship at a very, very young age, which is really good. And, of course, my grandfather and my parents... Um, all of us, in fact, were very involved with the mandir. So as soon as we moved, as soon as I was born, the new mandir had opened. So we were actively going out into the community, whether it's collecting money or whether it's using, you know, cooking for the homeless. All of them kind of <coughs> values and principles were instilled in us at an incredibly young age. Um, which now, doing community work, doing voluntary work, comes naturally to us. It's nothing out of the ordinary. You know, if you see someone in need, it's natural to go and help them. And I think them sunscars or them kind of um, values are taught naturally as when you're a child. Nice one. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching In Conversation with Imtiaz Patel Variyawala and we have got guest in the studio, uh, Neetal uh, Parekh. If you would like to let us have your feedback, your comments, your uh, opinion, observations and reservations about the program or anything, you can let us have that on our studio number which is UK 01204435825. You can also visit our website which is www.britasianbuzz.com or you can follow us or let us have your views on Facebook, Twitter and uh, WhatsApp as well. We have in our studio at the moment, uh, Neetal Parekh in conversation in conversation with Bieber's channel, in Patel Uh Thank you for that uh, information. My next question would be, 
Uh, Drum roll. <laughs> you are working as a teacher. I have to be very careful with my pronunciation because I mean, of course, English is not my first language. I speak Gujarati and then followed by Hindi, Urdu, and then English. So, uh, 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 if, if you if you notice anything kind of you know incorrect in terms of pronunciation, because teachers are very particular. I, I believe you know, in certain things. So, you are working as a teacher. What made you select uh, teaching as a, as a, as your profession? Um. Firstly, you know, your pronunciation is absolutely fine. You should hear some of my students, you know, they, they pronounce stuff with their text languages. Um, my, my mother was a teacher and I, I remember observing her from a very young age thinking, wow, you know, my mother is such a superhero uh, because she's able to take children, well, she's able to firstly tap into their potential and take them into a journey which will carve their future. Um, and it's an educational journey where they are learning and, and that, that information my mum was feeding. So I used to go to sometimes, you know, um, watch her do the marking, prepare for a lesson. And I could see how much satisfaction she got out of teaching. Um, and then I started doing classes where, because I love people, I used to love children. I used to always think I'm older than all the children and I used to be really bossy for you saying, no, you do this. And I instantly, you know, rather than kind of playing you know, dolls or whatever, I used to kind of get the book out and I used to make all the students sit down, which were my cousins, of course, and teach them. And I, I think that's when the bug bit, when the teaching bug bit. Um, and then I went to university and I did a completely difficult, I did international tourism and I went and worked in, you know, Walt Disney World for a year and, and you know, all that was really glamorous and fun and I came back and I thought, you know, I love that, I love working abroad, I love tourism, but... Why you know I want to actually teach. I, I I like teaching. That's always been my passion. And with God's grace, um, I managed to get onto the teacher training course. And just then that journey started. And then I, I started working in further education first. And I enjoyed it, but I knew I enjoyed working with children a lot more. I felt they were more you know sponges where they would take the information and um and just take it to a new level. And I particularly enjoy working with um, students who are of uh, Indian heritage because there's a lot of ba language barriers. I'm able to understand you know, some of the cultural pressures they may have, and I can really connect with that. So uh, it's the satisfaction of taking my students onto another educational journey, or onto the next part of the educational journey, and being there for them, you know, being a good role model, strong role model for them, and um, sometimes explaining it from a perspective as a young teacher to them as well. Nice one. So would it, would it be fair to say that uh, your role model as far as to become a teacher and that inspiration, that, that source of energy and ideas, uh, literally came from your, your mom? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, and I always thank my mom for being, um, you know, the more things the doctor did know <laughs> yes, yeah. she did none of that you know she always kind of whether it was in the creative field whether it was singing music dancing cooking teaching everything you know she encouraged because she knew as a child especially growing up if you know you should try everything in terms of what keeps you challenged um, and she gave us the liberty to do that and of course my, my dad as well you know my dad wasn't um, closed off saying, no, no, sit in your room and study. Not at all. He was very ahead of his time, I think, especially uh, when we were growing up, saying, you know, I, I'd love for you to you know, get that confidence, people skills, as well as teaching academic skills. I think it's extremely, extremely important that parents now invest their children uh, or the youth to uh, promote people skill in terms of how to be around people, how to treat, you know, like in your introduction, you just said, you know, should I call you Nidalji or should I? Some people aren't even aware of that. They, they, you know, if they saw, I, I know when I see a dada in town, I'll be Gemcho uncle, and you know, I won't be saying, "All right, mate, how you doing?" I, I really wouldn't do that. And these are like, again, these are values that you have. These are people skills that you can only be taught when you're exposed to people sure. from different cultures, backgrounds, races, and religion. Sure. Just very quickly, moving on to the next question, but something sure. came to my mind that. What is your view about, of course, in inverted comma, a uh, lot of Asian parents, including mine, you know, when I was very young, uh, my dad and mom always again wanted to kind of, you know, see me either as, a, as an engineer or a doctor. So they have set of expectation, okay, 
And and I think they do it with good intention, of course. Absolutely. Uh, I, I mean, I personally, in my opinion, I recognize that. But what what do you, what is your take on that in terms of parent expectations? Should they should they expect what their kids to be, or or, or or you would rather see that you know young people at that age uh, having that space, making their own decisions? Um, a really good question. Um, I look at my students. I, I I see my students, and the ones who are expected to achieve a grade A will become so pressured, so enclosed and not get involved and just work, work, work towards that because this is what my parents want. Whereas those parents, those students whose parents, you know, say, I just want you to work hard and do well, will be the students who will excel in their work and at the same time keep a balance. And this is, and I think this is the big difference. Even in parents' evening, you meet incredible amounts of different parents who have different mindsets. You have one set of parents who are like, no, no, my daughter must, my son or daughter must get an A or, you know, um, we'll have to lodge a complaint or something, something so dramatic and ridiculous. And then you have um, some some parents who are just like, you know, I, I'd like them to just do whatever makes them happy. And I, I always use three idiots. I don't know if anyone's, if you've seen three idiots or not. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been on the air, but I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the Bollywood movie, it was looking at um, the, the amount of pressure that kids are put under it usually results in them rebelling or just feeling disappointed in their parents. I know when I was growing up, I can only use my example, my parents really encouraged me to do what I love. And that became my motto. I know if somebody asks me, what do you live for? I will openly say I live to make my parents proud and make all their dreams come true. So it's now become my, their dream is my dream, basically. Um, so it, 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 the tables turn around naturally when your parents don't push you, don't put them in. Do you just believe that, you know, God will protect my child and they will achieve it because we all have our individual journeys. Nice one. From that note and from your experience as a teacher, can you talk a little bit about education in the British Asian communities? Yeah. Um, in terms of education, in terms of my students, when I, when I, if I had to compare, I find Asian students, our British Asian students, are the, the, the two extremes. You know, you'll have one who are the top of the mark, like they will be excellent, academically brilliant. And then you have the bottom ones, the bottom students, in, when I say bottom students, the, the one who don't achieve if they will, but excel in other fields. So it's just, sometimes, I don't know, I, I always find there's a lack of, ch some children have a lack of belief in themselves that, you know, oh, my dad says, I will never reach that. I will never get an A, I'll never get an A. So therefore I might as well give up. Um, and I remember when I was doing my teaching course, um, they always said, you'll have students who will, who will lack confidence because of their upbringing or because of what their parents may say or being compared to siblings. <coughs> this again comes back to the core foundation of the family. If your family believe that, yes, you can reach this, yes, you can do that, then you'll have no problem in school. I think what is a concern for me in education is parents shying away from those children who have dyslexic problems, um, who have learning difficulties and not acknowledging them. That is very, very dangerous because, again, it can result in just a person being depressed and upset. As a student, as someone, someone as young as 11 or 12 who may not have been diagnosed with learning difficulties or may have been diagnosed with learning difficulties but the parents still don't are not willing to accept it, and that's the biggest concern I think we have okay. in education. But can I just quickly bring another dimension in sure. terms of uh, education in British Asian community? Is do you reckon that uh, young British Asian generation is utilizing and 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 making best of the opportunity available in the UK uh, when it comes to higher education, college, and university education? Absolutely, yeah. I, I they are the most um, motivated, self motivated, very kind of go getters. Um, especially, I mean, if we look at it, like when they go to university, how much motivation and inspiration they've got to take advantage of uh, studying. And, and I guess, you know, although, you know, sometimes parents can be pushy, but in the same way, they value education. They know that, you know, we came in this country, you know, we got married, we never got a chance to um, pursue our education, therefore encourage their children. So, yes, I do think um, a lot of the British 
um, Asians today absolutely take advantage of um, education in a positive way. Nice one. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the program called In Conversation with Amin Tiaz Patel, Vareya Wala. We have got distinguished guests, very young, talented guests, uh, Neetal uh, Parikh in the studio, talking about the importance of education, family values, and making the best balance of both civilizations and both cultures. Uh, if you would like to let us have any comments, any feedback, any observations, or if you wish to make any statement, please call us on our studio number, which is UK 01204 You can visit our website, which is www.predation.com buzz.com and you can follow us on our, on our various uh, IT technical social media uh, elements which is Facebook, Twitter and WhatsApp. My next question to our guest is at what stage because now this is this is something different you you, you, you have got one head but many hats <laughs> which uh, I'm, I'm really using your phrase there <laughs> which is quite nice so at what stage did you start taking interest in media? Wow. I mean, you are working at the moment as BBC Radio presenter, you are working and producer, of course, and also uh, in, in Lancashire, and uh, you are part of this very big and most popular uh, Indian entertainment uh, uh, yeah. television channel, b for you So could you share your experiences as a media person? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the prospect of working with people internationally, uh, reaching my voice up to all across, well, sorry, let me start again with all of that. Um, working with people is one of my main kind of buzzes. It's my high. I love, love, love working with people. Um, at the same time, I want to be able to make a difference in society. Um, I want to be able to contribute to uh, maybe cultural awareness and positive integration. Um, as a teacher, um, I, I feel, you know, I'm able to get that creative, I'm able to get that satisfaction of um, helping my students and tapping into that potential. But um, I just know that my voice can reach out. I, I, I can contribute in changing perspectives or gi giving that cultural awareness because I've got a genuine passion for it. And that's where I understood the power uh, or the medium of television and radio. Um, and I wanted to always, always, as my Guruji says, as Divan Holiness Prophet Swami Maharaj always says that whatever you do, make sure it's ethical journalism that you do. Make sure you're true to your principles and you're not degrading any race, religion, person or anything. Ethical is the main kind of foundation. And I found, you know, working, um, I started with BBC as an entertainment reporter, uh, doing all the Bollywood gupshup and all of that. And as I kind of, you know, I wanted to, I was hungry to learn a bit more. This kind of love affair with BBC started a few years ago. Um, and I just went out into the community and got stories which I thought our listeners will be interested in. Whether it's, um, you know, a sponsored walk or whether it's, you know, ladies making a new dish and something that, you know, we use the word empowering, something that is empowering and integrating people and breaking down barriers. This is what I was interested in. And, I, and you know, the BBC and even the BBC Asian Network have allowed me to, you know, come on the show and present and uh, produce and bring these kind of stories which may not go out to everyone. Um, so that was brilliant. And B for you, like working on television, I love music. I love cr the creative medium of Bollywood. Um, when I say the creative medium, it's not just the acting. It's from the way they dress, cinemagraphy, lyrics... Um, music, everything excites me and um, I kind of looked at the presenters that were um, on the TV and I thought, you know, I can definitely do that, I'd, I'd love to do that and I think, you know, um, viewers might enjoy seeing me on television and that's how it kind of started from there and, you know, I went one fine day I went to meet them and they were like, you know, you're exactly what we need, I was like, yay! <laughs> and again, with God's grace, I, I was, um, I, I work with them now regularly. Nice one. Because, I mean, if you look at it, uh, BBC, I mean, big names, uh, before you, big names. Did you ever thought that you would be invited to Bieber's? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> well, it, for me, for me um, it, it, it's just as much as honour as it is working with, uh, you know, BBC <laughs> and B for you. Uh, it, like you said, it's all from the heart. How, you know, how much genuine effort someone is putting to make a positive message, that to me is very special. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, there's a feeling that the British Asian community are underrepresented as far as the media is concerned, including other institutions as well, but we are talking about media. 
Is this an accurate view of perception? To a certain extent, to a certain extent. However, um, if we look on television, we we'll start with Slumdog Millionaire. You know, we've got a British actor on there, Dev Patel. If we look on, uh, we've got um, Krishna Murthy, Krishna Krishna Murthy on Channel Four. We've got so many a uh, Asian inverted commas on the radio. Can't see that. Um, and now you're having desperate on Bieber. Yeah, exactly. I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> I think you know they are starting to become. I, I think um, Asians are being represented on British. Uh, British television or, or on international television I, and I do think the medium of the, the now crossover cinema factor is also creating that B buzz if you will um, but likes I, I can't remember who actually said it um, someone quoted that you know it shouldn't it should now just become a natural thing you shouldn't have to be like oh look there's an Asian sector there oh there's an Asian awards there why can't it just be a natural thing? You know, we've got a, we've got a presenter, a television presenter. It shouldn't just be segmented. It should just be kind of, you know, we've got this radio station which plays Asian music, not just because uh, we have to tick the box and have an Asian person on there. Right. So. so maybe, perhaps as a teacher, as a community activist, as a social activist, activist if I may call you, by listening to your activities and involvement at different levels, uh -huh. and of course being in, being in media, what do you think that uh, should be our role as a, as a community in the British society? Um, I think we should, I really, really hope and pray um, that now we have the confidence or we have, uh, we make the genuine effort to integrate with other cultures. I think it's fair to say that, um, you know, we have our Asian areas and we refuse, we become, we have such a comfort zone that, oh, you know, we've got the shark bhaji shop here, we've got our, uh, you know, say you've got your halal food here, you've got the mandir here, the mosque here, uh, gurudwara here, everything's just in the proximity. But what we are lacking now, I think, as an Asian community is we are not integrating with other cultures. There's only a certain section of our community who make that effort to do so. Maybe it is a language barrier, maybe it is, you know, perception that we're going to be judged, but who cares? I think, you know, let all that go. And if we integrate with so many different cultures, we could change so many mindsets, we could break, you know, change so many stereotypical views. And I think that's extremely important. I think that's a big positive change that only we can make or as a, you know, whether it's a radio station or even if you're a um, community worker, we can encourage um, people to go out there and just be understanding and accepting of how other people may live and just integrate a little bit more and be proud of being a British Asian. Don't be embarrassed that, um, so what if you have a bit of an accent? So what if you pronounce things wrong? We're different, we're all different people, but let's just not judge and accept. I think that's really important, um, an Asian mindset that we should have. Nice one with that positive message. Ladies and gentlemen, we have in our studio uh, Neetal Parikh talking about her experiences as a teacher, as a media person, as a community activist and as a social activist, uh, activist as well. Uh, be proud of who you are. Uh, that's a very profound message. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you would like to let us have your views and opinion, feedback, any reservations, observations or statements, please call us on our studio number, which is UK 012044358258. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp as well, including our website. Uh, and welcome to this program and thank you for watching this program. I'm Imtiaz Patel Variyawala, talking to In Conversation with uh, Neetal uh, Parekh. People in the community are all the time, if not the most of the time, talk about generation gap. Those who came in early 50s, 60s and then 70s and then you go first, second, third and almost now we are in fourth generations. Uh, what are your views on this, uh, on this generation gap issue? Uh, do you think that there is, uh, there is a big gap? Uh, between each generation, if at all it exists, and how can we bridge that? Um, it, it's a really interesting question in terms of generation gap because I see, I've never actually felt that generation gap with with my family. But obviously now that I'm exposed to more stories, more students, more kind of situations, um, this question was actually posed to my guruji, and um, what he said was. The solution to get rid of generation gap, gap is something called garisava. Now, garisava simply means um, 
in English is sitting at home with your family, believe it or not, not in front of the television, no mobile phones, no food, no nothing. You simply sit down with your family and a parent or a father or a mother or the child asks their parents, how was your day and what did you do? So once you kind of start communicating, that's just that precious 10 minutes a day with your whole family without any technology or anything, um, my God, as you say, you will see a difference because what we all crave as humans is someone to pay a little bit of attention, um, someone to, who shows genuine care, and that bridges gaps. That will bridge a gap. A parent will understand, oh, you know, actually, you, you're in your room. You could say, oh, you're just in your room, you're just playing the computer, you're just doing that one. You know, it's just showing, Dad, you know, I've seen this new app and this is what this happens and this is how... And knowing that, oh, actually, you know, my son's actually really good at technology, really good. Finding out things because, you know, we are... You know, there's that, there's that common joke, I have to book a 10-minute inter- appointment with my son because I'm not going to get to see him. But if you make it a rule um, to sit together um, as a family for 10 minutes a day... Um, I will guarantee you, and I'm quite positive and uh, confident that a generation gap will be minimised or eradicated completely. And as as that common phrase goes, you know, family you eats together, prays together, plays together, stays together, and that staying together really kind of um, minimises the generation gap. Let me extend. Let me just extend this question with bringing another dimension. Sure. Uh, and again, I think again, uh, on behalf of Bieber's, we are only working on certain assumptions and perceptions mm-hmm. in order to discuss and come up with some kind of positive solutions. Yeah. So it may sound negative, but right from the, 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 the moment we started this interview, you, you have really put a lot of emphasis on uh, family values, respecting grandparents, what they have done, respecting your own parents, uh, living as a family. Uh, getting involved in community issues uh, to build up community spirit, uh, getting close to individuals, you know, basically uh, you have really talked about what I call the ideal uh, Asian heritage model, uh, which has been there for centuries, if not then, for years and years and years and years. But having lived in the UK, Mm we have observed that, you know, it, it, it has started kind of, you know, uh, breaking up in different directions. Do you honestly really believe that young people on average, not exceptions, on average, mm-hmm. uh, are, a de- uh, are very close to these values nowadays, just what you are saying to us? I think, um, I do disagree to a certain extent in terms of saying these are Asian values. I think these are human values. Sure. Um, and I think these human values of valuing each other, being good to others, um, can never kind of go away because it's a, it's a, it's a natural kind of uh, feeling every human has. And I think, you know, as you surround yourself, do you know, again, I'm, I keep quoting my guru because he plays an important role in how I think. Jevo sung, they were done. Sure. Uh, so who yeah. you hang out with will determine <coughs> your character. So I do think it's not just about being Asian. It's not just about being British. It's about firstly being a human um, and finding out, exploring, even as a, even when you're 11, 11, 12, 13, you are exploring life and deciding what's good and what's bad. Uh, and them experiences will shape you. Your parents can kind of tell you as much as they can. Uh, you know, you have to do this, you have to do that. But only you, in the end, can make that decision. You know, I want to be a good person or not. So I do. I don't. I don't think they will die out at all. I think it's these are very human and real um, emotions or attitudes that every single person goes through. Nice one. It's so nice to hear that uh, saying, Jewel, well, Sun, Sun well, 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 I haven't heard that for a long time. <laughs> and uh, what a beautiful pronunciation, as, as well as what a beautiful philosophy you have uh, you know, shared with us. So then, the next move would be, as a member of the British Asian community, yes. I think the, the, the word I'm using, British Asian community, is of course just to create an identity. Because, yeah. you know, we have our own identity. Absolutely. And as you say, that, you know, we should be proud of that. So I'm just using this term sure. uh, in, 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 in a technical and in a positive spirit. That, you know, being a British Asian community, what future do you see for our uh, coming generations? Oh, gosh, a really positive one. I feel that parents are, uh, today parents are, 
being much more open, much more liberal, and much more balanced. Um, from what this is my observation, you know, there are, of of course, you know, I can't deny there are a certain section of um, you know, society or a uh, maybe a certain section of parents who will still be like, no, no, no makeup, no this, no that, no this, and you know, no, 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 still dictating, but. You know, we are growing. I think parents are becoming more exposed to uh, and be, be showing more genuine interest in the changes of the world, whether it's tech, technolo technology wise, whether it's media wise, whether it's even curriculum wise. Like, you know, being open to, you know, if a student says, Mom, I want to, Mom and Dad, I want to, I want to study performing arts, instead of saying, No, no, that's not a proper thing, you know, they'll encourage that. So, and I see our new generation of youngsters just being go-getters being extremely proud of their british heritage and indian heritage or asian heritage and balancing them so beautifully and just going up and that confidence is there you can just feel it and see it for yourself excellent thank you very much as we are moving <coughs> very quickly towards the end of the interview uh, uh, thank you very much for <laughs> so much good information but my last question yeah. i still have got here as i was going through your bio data and each point we have covered and you responded very nicely one of the sentence i couldn't kind of you know uh, say it fluently which i would like to say it again that i think you have proved it very much right that one of your motto or one of your uh, profound quality uh, you offer is your genuine zest uh, uh, for, for life. And yes. I, think, I think we have felt it and I'm sure that our viewers and listeners would feel the same <laughs> kind of you know energy and kind of buzz uh, wherever they are. So so thank you for, for that. You so My last question before we end this interview sure. uh, uh, is that uh, I'm very much uh, impressed, uh, not often that I vote, uh, but I'm very much impressed <laughs> <laughs> uh, by your motto uh, in life which is I quote uh, in the joy of others lies of our own, yes. end of quote. Beautiful. Can you tell our viewers and listeners how you are trying to live up to your motto? Because I believe that this is the Guru Mantra yes. uh, given to you by your Guru, which is by your Master, and we, we, we respect that. So please tell us more about this, and how you live yeah. up with this very profound statement. And you know, and when I was growing up, I never quite understood, you know, they'd always say in Gujarati that Vijana Bhalama Bhaluche Potanu and I'd be like, what on earth does that mean? Like, why would I want to make anyone else happy? I want to be happy. And this was like when I was a selfish child. <laughs> um, and as I grew up, as I was um, doing community work, I realized that you know, seva, but we call it like, it's, it's like seva, when you seva for the society, how good it feels. Um, and even smiling at someone, you know, when you're walking and you just smile at someone and someone can feel that energy, that's making another feel, person feel good. And what my Guruji means, I just like to kind of clarify that quote, that in the joy of others lies our own, which means we make others happy without having the expectation. Like, look, God, you know, I made that person happy, so I should get something back. You know, I need more ashi vibes for that. Make someone happy without having an expectation of having anything back. You know, do it. It promotes humility and being humble and being kind. And you want to do it more because you, you're not aware of the action that you do. And you practice it so much that it becomes natural to you. Um, and I try, you know, being aware, I try my best to be aware of my actions and what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. You know, am I giving um, someone a present so next year when it's my birthday, I'll get a present? You know, they're kind of little stupid kind of things that you, your expectations which a human mind has. I try to kind of minimize them and, and make it more prominent to make others happy. But like, for example, we have the Nepal earthquake right now. I... It just came naturally as soon as I want to do something to help. I want to do something. And these are, again, comes back to the basic values that we got as we were growing up. So whether it's being a teacher, whether it's on television, whether it's, um, you know, on the radio, or even if it's just walking down the street, I'm always, always um, kept the Guru Mantra in my head of um, trying my best to make others feel good, feel happy, um, and do something for them. Nice one. And I think on, on, on that note, uh, I, I have got another one very quick question. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, which, is, which is, I'm sure that our listeners and viewers would find it very interesting. Because you are born and brought up in this country. Yeah. Uh, in an environment where, uh, where we have gathered that, you know, you had the uh, best of everything. Uh, a good sound family background, virtues and scars and everything. 
you have got blessings from your guru as well, which is you know again uh, a very big thing from the from the from the perspective of you know uh, where we belong to. Do you feel yourself connected with uh, with your roots, with your heritage, which is India? Yes. Oh God, I I I feel incredibly proud of coming from um, a country which has you know always kind of. I always find India has two sides of the coin. Um, and I, I choose to look at the positive side of the coin, the, the culture side, cultural, spiritual and festive side. It is through festivals, you know, it's through festivals that you're able to create conversation with people outside of, you know, this, it gives you, first of all, it gives you an identity, not just because of the way you look, because you've got something to talk about, you've got something to share. Um, you look at people like Mahatma Gandhi, uh, I look at my guru, and I look at the, I look at my grandfather, and I think, you know, you are such powerful people in terms of how good you are to people like that to me is the biggest part. that to me makes a person powerful when you are good to someone and you go out and be courageous that to me is um it becomes very indian that that connect is there and i and i love um how there's a promotion of unity you know in india you have i know where we live my, my father's village you know, you've got people from all different kind of religions, caste, creed, and whatever, and they all just get on, they celebrate Eid together, they celebrate the Vasaki together, they celebrate Diwali together, and that's the beauty of it, and that's what makes me proud of being Indian, I think that heritage, uh, and, and, and that, that connect is always, always uh, there, no matter what. Nice one. Last, any message you would like to convey to our listeners and viewers before we end this program? Um, like I said, uh, be absolutely proud of who you are I think uh, you know if you have asmita of being um, a British Asian being British and being Asian you don't shy away from being British you know we've been brought up in this country there's so much we've got to learn we've uh, have been given the opportunity to and find that balance you know find that balance so I think you know be true to yourself and be proud of culture nice one thank you very much mm -hmm. find the thank balance you. ladies and gentlemen with that very positive note uh, this is the end of our program in conversation with you are listening to me myself in Tias Patel Bariyavala as, as one of your hosts of in this program with our very learned I would say young learned talented guest uh, Neetal Pare. thank you for sharing your personal stories and, you, and stories you. around your professionalism as well which we, which I'm sure that you know our listeners and viewers would find it inspirational and very very useful on behalf of Bebas we would like to thank our viewers and listeners to watch this program on behalf of Bebas uh, team on behalf of Bebas Community Media Center UK Bolton and viewers and listeners we would very much like to thank uh, Neetal Parik for thank coming you. to our studio for our valuable time and for sharing very very wonderful positive inspirational stories with us Ladies and gentlemen, very soon we will meet up again in another program in conversation with, with another distinguished uh, guest uh, on, on, on the different subjects. So keep on watching uh, Bebas. If you would like to let us have your views, comments and opinions, do ring us on UK number which is 01204 435825. You can find out more about Community Media Centre UK and also you can watch other different programs on our website which is www britasianbuzz.com or you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp. Wherever you are, you look after yourself, be happy and make other people happy as well. Thank you for watching.